Ella Bay. Aberdeer Cables announced an expansion of its capacity through opening a high voltage power cable plant with an investment of 185 million rands, which will create 58 jobs in addition to the 429 jobs at the company's current operations in the area. Investments in new plant equipment and in expanded production create new jobs and grow the GDP. The sectors where new production will take place are all within the sectors identified by President Ramaphosa in the State of the Nation Address. South Africa offers a unique combination of highly developed economic infrastructure, a vibrant emerging market economy, and access to the fast-growing African continent market. South Africa is also a frontier for new sectors of investment such as the green economy, oil and gas, shipbuilding and the oceans economy. On the second matter, which is the joint United Nations program on HIV and AIDS, uh, the UN AIDS Global Report, Cabinet is really encouraged by the latest UN AIDS Global Report, which was recently launched in South Africa. According to the report, South Africa has successfully reduced new HIV infections by more than 40% and AIDS-related deaths by around 40% as well since 2010. The report confirms our HIV and AIDS intervention strategies, reducing new infections and managing patients already living <coughs> with the disease are yielding positive results. Cabinet encourages all South Africans to live a healthy lifestyle to reduce new infections. The third matter that we are speaking to is on fighting crime. Cabinet reaffirms its conviction and commitment to create a safer and secure environment within our communities. With government and communities working together, we can eradicate the scourge of crime and create a safe and peaceful environment within our communities that is conducive for investments. Various operations undertaken recently by law enforcement agencies across the country resulted in the arrest of a number of suspects and the recovery of illicit drugs. South African National Defense Force soldiers have also been deployed in some crime hotspots to support members of the South African Police Service in their considered effort to bring gang violence and drug trafficking under control. Cabinet urges members of the community to remain vigilant and report all acts of crime to the police, irrespective of who is involved. The on cabinet decisions, cabinet approved the policy and policy direction for the licensing of the high demand spectrum. Uh, after ex after ex extensive consultations with the sector and the public, the policy and the policy direction sets a new framework for the transformation of the sector by, by enabling an entrance of new players in this important market, while at the same time encouraging investments and innovation. The Minister of Communications, uh, Mr. Ndabene Abrams, will in the next few days issue the cabinet approved final policy directive and brief the media. The second matter that the, pre the cabinet took a decision on is on the presidential expert advisory panel on land reform and agriculture report. Cabinet received the final report from the presidential expert advisory panel um, 
which uh, President Ramaphosa appointed uh, in September 2018 to provide a unified policy perspective on land reforms. The report makes findings on the current status quo and makes recommendations that will assist in accelerating the work of government in redressing the historical land distribution imbalances. Cabinet directed that all ministers, through their respective departments, must study the report and its proposed recommendations and revert to Cabinet within two months. The Interministerial Committee on Land Reform, chaired by Deputy President David Mabuza, will oversee this process. Cabinet extends its gratitude for the work done by the panel chaired by Dr. Vuyogazi Matlati and approved that the report be made accessible to the, to the public. The Minister of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development, Ms. Togo Didiza, together with the panel, will hold a separate media briefing to unpack the contents of the report. Uh, you will get the details in due course, uh, they are in our statement, but definitely this will happen this coming Sunday uh, in, in Johannesburg or in Pretoria. Bills. Recognition of customary marriages amendment bill of 2019. Cabinet approved the submission of this bill to Parliament. Uh, if you have not heard what I said, recognition of customary marriages amendment bill. The bill brings section 7, 1 and 2 of the recognition of customary marriages act uh, 1998 in line with the judgments of the constitutional court which declared the sections constitutionally invalid. The sections discriminated unfairly against women in customary marriages. The bill provides for the equal treatment of women in pre-act monogamous and polygamous customary marriages. The amendments eliminate the gender-based discrimination in polygamous marriages entered into before the commencement of the RCMA of 1998. Uh, spouses will now have joint and equal proprietary rights over marital property. Upcoming events, the Presidential Health Compact. President Ramaphosa will officiate at the signing ceremony of the Presidential Health Compact at George Mukhari Academy Hospital in Harangwa in Harangua, city of Tswane, on Thursday, the 25th July 2019, today. The Health Compact is an outcome of the Presidential Health Summit that was held in October 2018. The ceremony marks a milestone in the collective approach to achieve a sustainable quality health system. Another upcoming event is the first high-level annual policy dialogue forum on secondary education in Africa. The Department of Basic Education will co-host the first high-level annual policy dialogue forum <coughs> on secondary education in Africa with the theme Preparing Youth for the Future of Work with the Association for the Development <coughs> of Education in Africa. A D E A. It will be held from the 29th to the 30th of July 2019 at Emperor's Palace, Johannesburg. The forum will bring together ministers responsible for education, youth and labor from across the African continent, academics, policy makers, high level representatives from development cooperation partners, the private sector, civil society, teachers and parents associations, youth organizations, and you as the media. 
Deliberations will focus on the design and implementation of innovative models required in secondary education in Africa to better equip teachers and prepare students for the future of work. Cabinet continues to appreciate our participation in such enriching dialogues. On the Women's Month, the National Women's Day celebration uh, will be in Freiburg, Ruth Mompati District in the Northwest on Friday the 9th August 2019. Uh, the, this uh, Women's Month will be commemorated under the theme 25 Years of Democracy Growing South Africa Together for Women's Emancipation. The celebration pays tribute, as we all know, to the more than 20,000 women who marched to the Union buildings on the 9th of August 20, 1956 in protest against the extension of past laws to women. This protest became a turning point in our struggle for freedom and a democratic society. Despite our remarkable achievement in advancing the emancipation of women in our society, the scourge of violence and abuse of women in our nation persists. The hefty sentences handed down in Gauteng, in Gauteng sexual violence cases show that perpetrators of sexual crimes and other related offenses will not escape the cause of justice. Cabinet calls on all sections of society to oppose any violence and make a collective effort to reduce the number of sexual offenses and attacks on women and children as we march towards the total eradication of these vices. On messages of condolences, Cabinet mourns the loss of veteran freedom fighter Ndate Isaac Lesiva Braik Mapoto, who passed on at the age of 88. President Ramaphosa declared a special official funeral for Braik, who left South Africa in 1961 and underwent military and political training in Beirut and the former Soviet Union between 1961 and 1963 before joining the senior Lituli detachment of Mkondo Sizwe. As we also all know, in 2006, then President Tabombegi conferred the National Order of Lutuli in silver on Braik for his contribution to the struggle for freedom and democracy. The second message of condolence, Cabinet shares the national outpouring of grief with the family, friends, and, f and uh, fans of award-winning singer and songwriter Jonathan Johnny Lack, who used his music to promote a non-racial society. He will be remembered for his commitment to nation building, social cohesion, and non-racialism. He was a recipient of the National Order of Ikamanga in silver for his excellent contribution in the field of music and bringing African tradition music, traditional music with other forms of music. On congratulations, Cabinet congratulates the Proteas national team for their outstanding performance and flying the South African flag high by reaching the semi-finals of the World Cup in Liverpool, UK. Their improvement from position five to four in world rankings is highly commended. Cabinet also congratulated Miss Kala Pretorius for being selected and named as the World Cup 2019 player of the tournament. Cabinet also congratulated South African athletes for shining at the International Association of Athletics Federation Diamond League in London. National record holder, as we all know, Agani Simbani was in superb form in the men's 100 meters when he won the final in 
a season's best of 9.93 minutes. Uh, minutes. In the men's long jump, Louvo Manyonga won the men's long jump with a season's best of 8.37 meters, with compatriot Roswai Samai holding on for the third position with a leap of 8.11 meters. The cabinet also congratulated the Nlovu Youth Choir whose high-energy star-studded performance has seen them progress to the next round of the America's Got Talent live shows. Of course, we will not be true to ourselves if we did not also congratulate, as cabinet, our national rugby team, the Springboks who gave some people a serious hiding, won 35-17 over Australia in Johannesburg during the Super Rugby Tournament. The tournament is an, important, is an important sporting event that involves, as we all know, countries like New Zealand, Australia, Argentina and Japan. We wish our Springboks well as they continue in this tournament and we know they are off to New Zealand. Uh, we wish them well. Also, they will also be going to the other countries as well that we have mentioned. The cabinet also congratulated Team South Africa who helped to rewrite African history at the 30th edition of the International Universities, University Sports Federation in Napoli, Italy. Africa won a total of 26 medals collectively, while South Africa, out of those 26, we collected 18. And out of the 18 medals that we brought home, through the, our own students who participated in this uh, University Sports Federation. Six of the 18 were gold, eight silver, and four bronze. We also, Cabinet, uh, approved the appointments of the, of the Small Enterprise Finance Agency. Uh, the names are in the statement, but it's an interim board for a year. Uh, that basically ends our statement. Thanks very much, Minister. Um, can we start with uh, Pretoria, if there are any questions? Are there any questions in Pretoria? None. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, no questions this side, did you? Bye -bye. <coughs> and then I think you were the second, and then you Thank you, Chief Whip. Thank you, Minister. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Once, once a Chief Whip, always a Chief Whip. <laughs> um, I, I know the matter did not come up in um, the Cabinet meeting yesterday. Why ask it? But it did come up at the Cabinet meeting on the 27th of March, and it's related to the SARS Commissioner and the Public Protector's investigation into that appointment. Um, is, does this not mean that the Public Protector is taking a decision that was taken by the President with his cabinet, as well as the panel that um, selected Mr. Kiswetter? Is the Public Protector not investigating you and your colleagues indirectly? And what is your comment about this? Thank you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Good morning, Mr. Um, Minister, was there any discussion in Cabinet regarding the appointment of the ESCOM Chief Restructuring Officer as the Finance Minister, given, given details of who that's going to be? And just one other thing, can you tell us when the NHI policy is going to be gazetted? Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. Um, with regards to, as, as Babala asked, with regards to the public protector um, and now investigating the appointment of the SARS commissioner, does the presidency and the office of the president also looking at the past
across these events involving the president and public protect. Does the presidency and the president's office feel somehow under, under attack by the public protector? And secondly, with regard to uh, crime strategies, I want to know, during the liberations of anti-crime deployments, is the Department of Social Development, Basic Education, Labor part of those deliberations to look at long-term strategies of anti-crime, particularly in gang, gun violence areas? Yes. Um, mine is also to add on the uh, crime prevention and crime fighting. I just want to find out if Cabinet discussed um, how the SANDF is operating now, currently, um, after their deployment. Um, do they find that it is helpful because we do understand that uh, after their deployment into the Cape Flats and getting through the cop spots in, in Cape Town, we've seen an increase in murders, including that of police officers. And with the upcoming events, I see the, the, uh, the focus on secondary education. Did uh, Cabinet by any chance discuss tertiary education in South Africa in particular? Yes, I think that will be for now, uh, Minister. Well, then, <coughs> then, then let's start with the last question. The as you all know, the, the matters that we are bringing before you are matters that came before cabinet. Therefore, there was no discussion on tertiary education. The only matter around education that was before cabinet was this matter that we are reporting on, uh, preparing our young ones for the future of work through the prism of secondary education and the conference or the high level discussions and dialogue that will be held in our country. <clears throat> did we discuss SINDF operations? No, <clears throat> we did not. <clears throat> uh, safe to say that before even the SINDF uh, went to the areas that it went to, yes, the cabinet was appraised. Uh, before they went there. Uh, <coughs> uh, do we feel that uh, we are under attack? No, we have never felt that way by anybody. Uh, you, you will know that the President has said we respect, and it is our attitude, we respect all structures that are created by our Constitution and uh, we will support those structures in fulfilling their constitutional obligation. Uh, so, <clears throat> anti-crime strategy, does it, does it include other players? Um, you will know that the Minister of Police has also involved other ministers uh, in the fight against crime uh, so that we also look at the social uh, contributions to crime. So he has interacted with other ministers on, on fighting crime, uh, not only in the Western Cape but anywhere else. But there are times when they have gone together with ministers of health and other ministers when our trucks were banned or when the trucks of, of uh, South Africans were banned on some freeways. Uh, the ministers as a team went to speak to those people who were aggrieved by the the uh, employment of uh, truck drivers uh, uh, who came from outside of our country. So yes, there's always a collective approach to, to these matters. Uh, the, did, was the SARS commissioner discussed or the any investigation by anybody, no, on the South Commission, no. It, it never came for, for, for discussion uh, in the in cabinet. 
the chief restructuring officer yes urgently there, there will be a report uh, that will that will appraise uh, cabinet how far we are but yes that matter no, we did not necessarily get the person or persons who will be tasked with this but uh, of course we were assured that very soon this matter will be before cabinet it will be served before cabinet on who because there is agency there is agency to stabilize escom and key actions towards this stabilization is the appointment of the chief restructuring officer so yes the, the, that matter will come before cabinet including the person that or persons uh, that will be seized with this uh, matter. NHI, if I'm not mistaken, I thought that I said in the last uh, cabinet briefing that as cabinet we had concluded the executive interaction with this matter and we said it will now proceed to parliament, uh, this NHI bill. Uh, and uh, to the best of my knowledge, it should be with the speaker now. Uh, and, uh, the speaker uh, will be able to direct it to the relevant committee, which will be the committee of, uh, of health uh, in parliament. So that, that's, uh, well, I didn't understand the question well, but I'm just saying what I know about this NHI matter. Uh, and if I remember well, we also, at the time in our last briefing, we also said uh, the Minister of Health will also come to brief you on the content of this NHI bill. I just hope that happened. And yeah, it did happen. So, but the, the, where it is now, it is with the relevant portfolio committee of parliament or with the speaker who will direct it to the relevant portfolio committee of parliament. I, I think I've answered all your questions. Thank you, Minister. I think <coughs> that's the, the last round. Pretoria? Nothing? Okay. Uh, um, I think we are, we, we are fine, just say. So. Okay. Paul and Keep up the good work of being <laughs> fine. <laughs> okay, let me start with Paul and then with Tabo and then with and then, and then we'll come this side. Yeah. Good morning, Minister Paul Vecchiato of Bloomberg. Um, the report on landform from the uh, expert panel. Has that been presented to cabinet yet? If not, when do you expect it to come before cabinet? That's the problem of being late. <laughs> Paul, oh, sorry. read the statement. <laughs> Thank you. Next. Tabo. Tabo and then <laughs> Thank you, uh, Minister. My name is Tabo Mukwini. I work for the Sunday Times. If you could talk a bit uh, on the, the recognition of customary marriages amendment bill. Um, to what extent would you say uh, this is a significant legislative step, uh, and, and what are your <coughs> what are your time frames? By when would you want to uh, see this finalised by Parliament? Thanks. And that's you. Uh, just ah, behind you. Yeah. 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 All that is a main um, time frame. Just on the, the land report. The report on the panel. You mentioned that the uh, cabinet um, said the ministers must come back to, to them within two months. But where does this leave the parliamentary process? Um, since the, uh, the ad hoc committee hasn't started, started with this work in this regard um, yet um, in the sixth parliament, so um, what will, will it have any influence on that process? Thanks. Okay, that's you, and then we come this way. Sorry, can I just get clarity on the ESCOM and CRO position? You indicated it would come back to Cabinet, which would indicate that it would be only two weeks before Cabinet would consider the matter. Does the C 
CRO have to actually be signed off by cabinet, or is this, is this a, a, an appointment that will be decided by the finance minister? Yeah, and then, yeah, actually, and then, yes, the two of you, and then the two in front. Oh, she, oh, so you are happy. <laughs> okay, all right. Minister, I, I share a smile from NCA. I have two questions. The one is, um, was the Zondo Commission um, discussed by the Cabinet? And no. <laughs> no? No. No. Okay, the second question is um, about the customary marriages. Would that include Muslim marriages as well? Minister, thanks for uh, the first uh, couple of uh, first five paragraphs at least of the of your of the cabinet statement that deals with the positive of uh, investment and the economy, but that is seemingly um, uh, doesn't take uh, um, into consideration the larger uh, problems facing the economy, and um, I'm I'm looking specifically at the S component and the uh, uh, negative um, credit negative. Um, um, implications that might have for the economy. How concerned is cabinet, and I know uh, generally cabinet does have uh, regular updates on the economy, how concerned is um, cabinet on the overall state of the South African economy? It seems to be struggling at the moment. I mean, also cut our growth prospects. We are uh, just um, above 0% uh, at the moment of growth, but under 1%. How concerned is cabinet um, um, uh, 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 about the growth and the prospects for the South African economy uh, in this year? Uh, and should, even for better uh, Moody's uh, downgrade as the junk status, um, you know, are we facing a recession? Thank you. Linda. Uh, Linda in top of this day. Um, Minister, the Pepsi um, <coughs> acquisition, um, does that not, does cabinet sort of discuss the threats of that to South Africa's food security and job creation and perhaps um, indicate whether <coughs> there can be stringent conditions on that in acquisition? Thanks. Then uh, Minister, and just on the presidential advisory panel on land reform, I, I noted that there will be a briefing on Sunday, but at a high level, I mean, if you can sum it up, I mean, what does it suggest uh, given the issues around the land expropriation and compensation? Just at the high level, what does it suggest? I'm sure that the that report has been presented to government. That's all. One is the last one, and then that's your last round, Minister. Aisha? Mm. Do you know what the cabinet is? <laughs> but let's leave it there. Uh, no. Uh, <coughs> the, on the land uh, reform panel, again, I would like the panel itself, and we have agreed with the panel, so that those of us who were not part of the panel should not come here and put our own emphasis on their report. The panel will be briefing you on Sunday uh, together with the portfolio minister. Uh, and that's how we work, uh, so that we, we, we don't uh, make uh, blunders uh, with in relation to a report that has been produced by experts. Now, we want the experts themselves to come to you, ask them questions. Uh, don't ask me questions because I will put my spin on the report. Then you ask me questions, you go to them and they say, but where did you get this? Now, I don't want us to get into that predicament. Let's allow the panel to give a proper briefing. Together with the person who will be tasked with the implementation of the report, we have said in our statement the 
minister, the, the, high, the interministerial committee led by the deputy president, which includes, by the way, the minister of land, uh, Umam Togo Didiza. They also have to, in, within two months, get interventions and inputs from various government departments into the report, then bring a memo to cabinet where cabinet will then discuss the report. Cabinet welcomed the, the, the report. It did not delve into a discussion. So there was a presentation made Cabinet did not delve into a discussion until this other process has been concluded. The all departments have made inputs into the report, uh, but of course, Cabinet uh, was very eager that all South Africans must get the report. You will get the report and read it yourself. Uh, no, no, no. When you meet with the minister, the likelihood is that the report, the Minister of Land will either put it in their website or in the website of GCIS. So we'll make the report public. But people who can speak authoritatively on this report are people who have produced the report. Um, and we have made that arrangement that on Sunday they will speak on that report. Uh, we don't think that this in any way makes you less wiser. Growth of the economy, all of us, I mean, the, the president, even as he was stating the state of the nation address, indicated that one of our key apex priorities is growing the economy. So there is no question about it, that we, we must work towards growing the economy. Now, when you see people investing in our economy, I think that is something that all of us must welcome with both hands. Uh, yes, we know that we are not performing that well. Yes, we know that there are inhibitors that also make other people not invest in, in our economy. Yes, we know that cabinet and the various departments are confronting these inhibitors uh, that makes people not to invest in our economy. But already we have seen that this is paying off um, where people are now coming in. We have just given you a few in our statement uh, of people who are investing in our economy. Uh, we, we hope that this investment if these investments will continue so that we improve the performance of our economy uh, as our own priority area uh, as put by the president. The CRO, well, the, 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 the cabinet will have to be appraised on who the person or persons are uh, when the process has been concluded. So the, 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 oh, definitely the, the, the cabinet will be, uh, will be appraised uh, who the CRO is um, between the Minister of Public Enterprises and the Minister of Finance. Uh, so we will get to know who the, so of course, also, there is also the Minister of Energy who also comes into the mix. Um, so we, we will, as cabinet, be taken into confidence who the person is. But the, the behind the scenes work will be done by the people that you have mentioned, Minister of Finance, uh, Minister of Public Enterprises and Minister of Energy. So together they will then say to Cabinet, this is our view and this is why we think this person will assist us as a country uh, to turn around this entity. <coughs> uh, 
Paul, we, we answered you. I hope that you have found the answer to your question in our statement. Uh, Tabo, the bill on customary uh, marriages. Now, can we also assist uh, that we, because we will have to delve into the detail of the bill. Uh, we, we can assist by bringing the relevant uh, colleague uh, to speak on this matter uh, so that uh, we don't, uh, because at the moment the bill, all that we, we has been done is that the bill will proceed to the to to parliament uh, for interaction with the various constituencies uh, in our country so as we have done with the nhi bill can we agree that we will also bring the relevant minister to speak to you on this bill uh, so that we are then able to explain the various variables and what were the judgments and what this bill seeks to do, uh, bringing in line this Customary Marriages Act with our constitution. So I think it, it will be better that we, we will make the arrangements that we have. Who's the minister responsible for? Hmm? Justice. Uh, we will bring the minister at his earliest convenience before you to just come and speak to this bill. Uh, I'm not sure whether I've not answered all the questions. There was something about the land advisory. Huh? Or oh, Pepsi. Oh, no, no. We, we are saying in the statement, by the way, that anybody who comes to invest, all our laws will apply. The regulations that are here will apply, but you'll also know that uh, one other important um, entity of our government that will also apply is the Competition uh, Commission uh, to see whether as we do all these things, our strength, are we strengthening ourselves uh, as a country? So we have said that all our regulatory frameworks will apply, and of course, there are statutory bodies like the Competition Committee. In fact, I'm told that as we speak now, uh, apart from the shareholders, because uh, Pioneer Food has its own shareholders, First of all, those who want to uh, invest in Pioneer Foods whose names are PepsiCo, first of all, the shareholders must agree. So even if we as government can jump up and down, if the shareholders don't agree, that's another issue. That's the first point. The second point is that that acquisition must also be subjected to what we subject all acquisition to, uh, the various stringent uh, regulations of our country and uh, the various uh, structures that we have that oversee uh, such regulations uh, in our country. So they, it will all be subjected to that. So it's that process ultimately that will say, are we nodding to the acquisition or not? Subject to all those, that's what we are saying in our statement. But having said that, we are still an investment destination. That's the point that we want to make. Because at times, as South Africans, we sell ourselves short. Uh, I don't think that there is anybody in our country who will want to block an investment, particularly if it does not detract to the values that we hold dear. 
uh, values that are covered in our constitution, in our myriad of laws, if that does not detract, uh, investment is welcome in South Africa. And in fact, this is what we are saying to everybody else out there. If you want to invest, like PepsiCo has done, uh, like uh, others have done, you are most welcome to invest in our country. I hope that that answers you. Oh, on the land. No, no, no. By the way, the it, parliament, let, let's first make the distinction so that we are all on the same boat. Whatever the executive does, uh, our constitution makes a distinction between the executive arm of the state and the parliamentary arm. So, at a high level, this report of the panel has no bearing on what parliament has started and what parliament is engaged in. Uh, because that's an executive initiative. So parliament will continue with what it intends doing. Uh, you have said, will they continue with the um, determination of whether they should uh, do some amendment to Section 25, I can't speak for Parliament. Uh, what I can assist you with is that maybe you can call the Speaker at an opportune time and ask the Speaker what's happening in relation to this and that and that which is in the in the back uh, of parliament. The, the executive will not be able to respond to those matters. All that we can say is that whatever we do at executive level at the cabinet, that does not have or nullify what is in the domain of parliament. Parliament is independent. Equally, our judiciary is independent. We are also independent to do what we have to do. As long as all that we do, all of us, is not inconsistent with the Constitution. Thank you very much, Minister. We come to the end of this briefing, and thank you very much for coming. <coughs> So, you, can it still be announced and then you'll be appraised on who it is? It doesn't need to go to your foot before it's been announced as cabinet. I, you see, by the way,